And we're back with Laura Bowen. Here's a lovely discussion with men. Man, boy, daddy, man, she, she's a dish, ain't she? Yes, the first of them certainly have something. I don't think my wife would have done it in a money case. Oh, in my past experience of woman from different lands, I tend to agree with you, Mr. Niger. I backed up when a certain French woman suggested we have a deep conversation on the back of a dinosaur, but I was pleasantly surprised by the results. Ew. 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 Yes, Miss Dolacro is certainly the cat's pajamas, as the Americans would say. <laughs> <laughs> she does it when she does go after the same dinosaur. Quite. <laughs> oh, good lord, I haven't realized a woman was present. Close your eyes, gentlemen! Oh, I wasn't actually listening to you, ge gentlemen, uh, Dr. Carrington. I just happened to be standing here. Excuse me. With, With your... my hand. At, my at your head. hand, very nonchalant. <laughs> Being like, oh, I'm not listening to you. Hmm. I am having the hardest time keeping my hands off you. <laughs> Not here, Yavet. There's too many people. <laughs> they are not important. You are the most powerful man here, my Ryan. What about that Carrington guy? He's the president of this museum. The doctor is old and weak. You're the young one and strong. Oh, and what do you be wanting, Miss Bo? With your weird brown red hair. Oh, oh, well, I thought I heard you call my name. <laughs> you must be hearing things. I didn't even mention your fucking name. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I I've got to get going now. Excuse me. I'm our both. Oh, you're both here. And what were you doing when that fancy dagger was being fucking stolen then? <laughs> Mm, let me see. I was sleeping in my hotel room. You don't sound too sure about that. I haven't been sleeping too well since I arrived in this country. I'm tired, so I'm not thinking too well. You're not sleeping well? Would you be having a guilty conscience then? I do not understand your meaning, Mr. O'Reilly. Perhaps it is the English. It is such a curious language, not as clear as Egyptian! Well, you say that dagger is what brought you to this country if I was in your position. I'd be tempted to steal it! <laughs> steal what a cell lady be stolen? The dagger of Amra belongs to the Egyptian people, Mr. O'Reilly. Not to Dr. Carter, not to this museum, and not to this country. I'll be watching what you say, Dr. Smith. You're digging yourself. You're digging your hole deeper with each word. <laughs> Amor will seek his own vengeance on those who have removed the dagger from Egypt. Amor does not require my help. You say you were sleeping when it was stolen. Were you alone? That, sir, is none of your business. Oh, you had a horsey then, did you? Ah, and that's where you're wrong, Dr. Smith. It is my business as long as you're a suspect in the burglary. A suspect? Do you Americans have no shame? I'm here to gain the return to the, the of the dagger by legal means as Dr. Carrington. I have stalked to Dr. Carrington and I know he told you no dice. The matter is not settled until the last camel drinks from the water of the oasis. What's that, some kind of Egyptian double talk? Certainly sounds like bullshit. Excuse me, sir, but I see a turkey leg on the buffet table that requires my attention. Goodbye. And then he stays here. Okay. I'm I'm still standing here. I'm working. I'm waiting for the turkey leg to come to me. <laughs> oh, God, if only this is a conversation. <gasps> oh, it, it is. is. Oh! If you want to know my theory about it, I think it was stolen by an Egyptian. No offense to your people, Mr. Niger, but I think there was a secret sect of Egyptian sun worshippers that sent an envoy here to serve the Kenneth, I do not think that's highly likely. The, the thing, so like your, your destiny hasn't existed in the sun hundreds of years. Oh, really? 
Really? And what makes you such an authority on Secret Six, Mr. Najee? Well, I'm only expressing my opinion, madam. I'm certainly not an expert on the subject. I love to smoke. Quite so. Oh, I've changed voices again. Uh, <laughs> I think my theory is as good as anyone's, darling. Oh, who is that? I don't know. I missed it. Never mind. Let's just say my source has never been wrong before. As she whispered in my hidden canyon. Hmm. Oh, this has always been a first time for everything, Canon. But I find your theory far this. <laughs> you seem to be listening, Miss Bo. What do you think of my theory? Oh, I think it's definitely worth considering, Countess. I mean, the Countess. There you see, Mr. Najir. The press takes me seriously. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, of course, it is rather far-fetched. Hmm. Well, I'll never excuse me. <laughs> oh, did I say something wrong? I'm sorry. With my hand in my ear, just like that. Yeah, <laughs> sit down, sit down, Candace. I'd rather not talk about it right now. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. The world's got airs around here. And so do women, apparently. <gasps> and so does a certain noisy reporters, if you know what I mean. Yes, now, if you'll excuse me, I simply must talk to Dr. Carradine. I sure think, Tuts. <laughs> to the right, to the oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, ain't you the hoity toity dame these days? <laughs> I almost didn't recognize you as with your clothes on. Excuse me, I am uh, annoying you, sir? Zig is my Monica. You gotta pretend you doesn't know me. Uh, you are making the joke with me, no? Perhaps you have me confused with someone else. <laughs> I ain't joking. You're a fat elkhorn. I know that butt of yours anywhere. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, Dr. Ziggy. Dr. Ziggy? I mean, Mr. Ziggy. <laughs> oh, I get it. You just wear the one of those high hats. It's gonna hear us, right? I can't clue it in. We can talk later. And we're gonna play doctor games. <laughs> oh, I can't try the culinary delights with this evening, Mrs. Donald. The food, it, uh, it's adequate. I do not eat so much. It is the way I maintain my figure, no? Ah, yes. And a lovely figure it is, Mrs. Delacroix. Miss Delacroix. Oh. Merci, Dr. Carrington. You are so kind. Mm. I feel I've known... We've known each other long enough. Please call me Archibald. As you wish, Archibald. I am yours to command, as always. Oh. Oh. Miss Bow, is there something I can do for you? Uh, no, no. I was just admiring Miss Delacroix's dress. Merci, Miss Bo, and your gown. It is uh, a bit out of date, but uh, charming nonetheless. Uh, thank you, I think. <laughs> well, if you ladies will excuse me, I must mingle with the guests. Goodbye. Well, well, look what the fucking leprechaun's dragged in. <laughs> hey, hey now. Watch what you scare me, Randy. I don't know what that leprechaun is thing is, but I don't like the sound of it. I'm not looking at you. I'm sure you've been called worse things, smart guy. Only by low class type poisons, Randy. By the way, aren't you afraid of being seen with me? Oh, hmm. cops talk to stoolies all the time, and I was wondering what you were doing here. I'm not looking at you, actually, but I'm a big patron of the arts. That's a kind of high-class guy I am. You don't even know what the word patron means. I does, too. It's an internet platform. That's Patreon. But what does patron mean? <laughs> um, hey, I did the Countess. I see you over there. I need to talk to her. <laughs> I got his... Oh. And they're all looking at her like, hi. And look, Ziggy stayed here. 
Who's that guy on the right? That's Ziggy. No, 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 on the far right with like the, the brown dress. Who the hell is that? Oh, he disappeared. Now he's been replaced by a woman. <laughs> One thing I admire about the Egyptian man is the uh, way he's treating his women with a strong hand and the strong words. Oh, well, that is the proper way as our culture teaches us. Which is not to say our culture is primitive by any means. Our civilization has evolved over thousands of years, so our methods are quite well thought out and practical. And the Egyptian man, he is very skilled in the uh, private matters as well, no? Well, speaking for myself, I feel it's my sacred duty to be knowledgeable in all matters that concern me. I've certainly had no complaints about my skills, Miss Delacra. Oh, Miss Bo, I didn't see you standing there. Uh, uh, don't look at the trend of my pants. <laughs> I well, I hear another turkey leg calling when I'm at the buffet table. So if you excuse me, goodbye. Ooh, there's a turkey leg. It is a. Uh, it sounds good to me too. I'll accompany you, Doctor Smith. Oh yes, please. Yes, except I didn't. Ah, you, uh, good. <laughs> goodbye, apparently. <laughs> ah yes. Oh. Gantis, they say you was married to the last museum president, no? Yes, darling, that's correct. Sterling Water Closet was such a charming man and so wealthy. My heart's just in empty void without him. Yes, yeah, Sterling was such a nice man. It's, it's too bad that he's wealthy now. Oh, I've heard to, heard to think that Sterling's still with me in spirit. Oh, I'm sure his body is crawling with maggots by now. But if his spirit is with you, let me know because I'd love to see it. Wow. It, it, it is uh, hard to lose a loved one, no? I understand you were only married for the short time, Countess. Yes, I heard only two short but charming months with, of married life with Sterling before he died. And how long had you known the man before you were married? Oh, we met just one charming month before we decided to get hitched. It was love at first sight. Where did you meet him? Oh, I'd only been in this country a few weeks when I met Sterling off an offshore casino ship. It's quite legal to drink and gamble there, you know. And all the right people attended. Oh, Sterling was so charming, he just swam me on my feet. Is this Sterling? He must have had the large broom. Uh, <laughs> it's a matter of speech, my dear. Sterling was a wealthy man. You must have inherited a nice fortune, Countess. The money doesn't matter, darling. Ashley is in well, no one problem with the estate right now. It seems Sterling was changed to his will when he died. To give me more money, perhaps? Anyway, I'm sure my attorney will sort out the problem. <laughs> Too bad you can't dig him up to finish his new will. <laughs> yes, quite. That was very strange. The archaeology, it is such a masculine profession, breaking into ancient tombs with your sledgehammer, thrusting your way into the treasure chambers, touching the gold artifacts, it's also simulating the... <laughs> um, yes, well, when you put it that way, I guess it is rather stimulating to the most important archaeologist of all time. Oh, and it is such a burden to bear the greatness now. With such pressure to perform, you must be perfect all the time. My eyes are huge right now. Yeah, so you have quite a unique understanding of my problems, event. Uh, your problems, they are obvious, no? <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, very kind of you to say that, but there are many who misinterpret my actions. They do not understand the pressure of having famous relatives in the same line of work and having to compare oneself to them all the time. Oh. Ah, but the Tutankhamun find it is nothing compared to your discovery, no? 
Uh, do you mean the discovery in my pants? That's correct. I didn't lie. I didn't realize you would knew so much. I know many things, Dr. Carter. Oh God, I'm horny. Why did I eat the Spanish fly? So I've heard. Maybe we should discuss archaeology sometime. I'd love to hear about the work you do, Dr. Carter. Perhaps later tonight, maybe five minutes from now. Uh, will you be uh, jerky? I mean, working late tonight? Oh, yes. I think everyone will be here tonight, you know? There is much to be done to prepare for the opening of your exhibit tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I was planning a break for tea around uh, 3 a.m. if you'd like to join me. Oh, it sounds wonderful. Perhaps you'd like to come by my office where I can crack open my legs then. Uh, um, I'd be delighted. <laughs> It is so gracious of you to take the time to speak with me. I'm going to go see if I can, you know, get banged by someone else. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> Think nothing of it. I'm going to jerk over the corner now. How will I ever repay you for your courtesy? I know how busy you are, Dr. Counter. Mm. Mm, I'm sure we'll think of something. And call me Pippin. Ah, oh, Pippin Longstock. <laughs> <laughs> I told you to stop bothering me, you camel driver. Dr. Cutter, I will stop bothering you when the, re when the dagger is ba safely back in Cairo. I don't know if you've noticed, but the bloody dagger has been stolen from the bloody museum, you great twit. I see no reason to exchange every tips with you, Dr. Cutter. I'm aware of the burglary. I'm also aware that no evidence was left behind and the dagger case was not harmed. In fact, I think you removed the dagger from the exhibit. Me? Me? And what bloody reason would I have for you to steal my own bloody dagger from my own bloody exhibit? The dagger is not yours, Doctor. It belongs to the Egyptian people. As to why you stole it, I do not think... I do not pretend to understand your twisted American thinking. Perhaps you wanted to keep the dagger for yourself in your own private collection? Perhaps I should ask why you're shifting the blame onto me, you insignificant peasant. It would be very clever of you to steal the dagger, and then stay, uh, stay about to start rumors about someone else stealing it. Only an archaeologist thief would make such an accusation, Doctor. Now I'm sure that you've stole it for yourself. I did not! <laughs> yes, you did! I did not! Did. Did! Did not! Thrilling dialogue. Did! <laughs> I love the power. Gentlemen, the pauses. please! Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, who asked you? Mind your own business, you nosy reporter. Uh -oh. But I... No. I have more important things to do, like banging that event. All discussion is far from over, Dr. Cutter. We will meet again, bitch. <laughs> That's what you think, you malodorous buffoon. And we're gonna save there and come back next time for... <laughs> Mo Larabao. Larabao.